let me ask you about De'Aaron Fox and the fact that he's come out today and said that he's 99 to 100% sure he's going to play tomorrow night. In any way, are you surprised by that? Well, uh, first of all, uh, thanks, Nick and Rami, for uh, uh, inviting me to the show. What? Yes, I was, at, I was at practice today. Um, uh, actually, I was kind of surprised that he was out there uh, when I, we first walked in, you know, with the rest of the members of the media. Um, he was not present at that time, so I just thought that was a done deal. Then later on, uh, after we interviewed uh, Davion Mitchell, I look over my shoulder and there he is, you know, he's putting up some shots. So we stopped what we were doing and, um, you know, people were taking pictures and, and photos and, you know, checking it out. But and another surprising thing was how comfortable he was taking those shots. Um, I think I, I, stopped, I started counting up to like 25. He might have took like 30, 35 shots. But I was just pretty surprised of how many shots that he was taking and how comfortable he was at taking. Now, uh, him playing tomorrow, that still is yet to be uh, cleared up. But um, it looks like it's look like he's ready to go. You know, yesterday, when, when the news didn't seem as good, Nick and I were sitting here saying, man, if they don't have De'Aaron Fox, this this thing's a wrap, this this series. <laughs> would, would they have a chance in your eyes at all if, if they didn't have De'Aaron Fox? Or if De'Aaron Fox is just nowhere near the guy that, that we've gotten used to seeing throughout this series? Uh, good question, Rami. Um, Thank you. Uh, and I, and I, asked, I asked De'Aaron about this today. Of course, it was a little rhetorical question, but uh, – to me, he's been the best player on the court in these last four games. I mean, you could argue that uh, Stephen Curry, you know, is is doing great too, and and, and, and he is. But uh, De'Aaron is really instrumental in what happens in that offense, and he's been playing some pretty good defense as well. Um, it, it it would be a a little bit of a struggle if he was not there. Now, what probably hasn't been talked about with Mike Brown was discussing today. I mean, we're going to find out in these first couple of minutes uh, whether he starts or, you know, he come off the bench, you know, what he's made of, will, you know, that pain tolerance that they've been talking about, will he be able to withstand that? We'll find out in those first couple of minutes whether, he, whether he'll be out of there. No, he's not at 100%. I, I, that I do not uh, – I, I, I would not go with that, uh, that narrative because uh, he's wearing a splint. Yeah, which was uh, clearly vi visible to all of us and stuff. But it, it, it is important that he is be out there on that floor for game five because this is a very pivotal uh, game tomorrow, and they definitely need the Aaron Fox. Antonio Ray Harvey from the AP is with us here talking Kings Warriors. Antonio, even if the Aaron Fox starts tomorrow night, should Davion Mitchell start alongside him? Uh, another good question. Uh, we did talk to Davion today. He's ready to go. He's looking for this opportunity. Uh, whether he starts or starts alongside him, you know, um, I know Herder, Herder, they, they need him as well too. Whether he starts or not, but um, Damian, I mean, whew, Damian is putting so much pressure on, on Stephen Curry. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea, to, you know, to start him, you know, uh, give him that shot too, because of course, you know, Steph is going to, you know, do what Steph do. You know, he's going to get four or five three pointers, and he's going to make these ridiculous long range shots that take forever to drop through the net. But Davian has been playing some really good defense on this cat. So whether he starts alongside Fox or not, uh, he, he should have a ample of time, you know, to be out there on the floor to uh, uh, make an impact. I, I really like the way he's been playing these last four games, offensively and defensively. You know, we, we've heard multiple people, including you say that, that De'Aaron Fox seemed in good spirits and, and happy at today's practice that that, that I'm not surprised by the, the guy whose whose spirits or attitude or mood I'm worried about right now Antonio is Domas Sabonis because the Warriors have given him fits all series do you sense any any sort of uh, I don't want to say demoralization in 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 Domas but just any any anything there where he's he's just not quite himself or discouraged by what's gone on so far here in this series well, I, I don't know. It just seemed like, you know, you know, through the course of the season, you know, DeMont has been out there like the Three Stooges. He gets slapped like on every play, you know, in the <laughs> face, in the arm, and, in in you know, in the hand. And, and I mean, but it's just the level of physicality that's been happening in the last four games. And I've watched all four games. It has picked up. 
okay? So the Warriors know what they're doing. They know, especially Kevon Looney, you know, that they have to get physical with him. And, yes, I do believe that is bothering this game. I've never really seen him miss this many layups in a, in a game. It's like, you know, come on, man. And another thing, too, that I want to point out, you know, why these things are happening, yes, he is looking for the rep to, you know, to bail him out and get some of these fouls, and that's not going to happen. I mean, between Herder, Herder, Malik Monk and um, uh, Sabonis, they seem to be having this, hey, did you see that <laughs> foul while the game is in progress and the opposing team is running back up the court? You're not going to get those type of things. You see how physical this game is, okay? You can discuss that later because I'm seeing a lot of the Marcus Cousin type of stuff, you know, sitting in trying to, you know, convince the uh, referee of what's going on. You know how physical this game is. DeMontis – I'm looking forward for him to play a little bit better tomorrow. But he understands what, what situation this is, okay? This game is not going to stop being physical for him. And, and he's a physical player himself. You know, I see some of the stuff that he's doing, you know. Um, I don't think it's warranted he's stomping on him because, you know, he grabbed his, you know, he grabbed another individual's foot. Maybe he was trying to protect himself like that. But, um, yeah, yeah. The Monsters going to have to step it up a little bit. The game is physical. He understands that. Get out there and play. Last one for you, Antonio. Uh, given that Fox is not going to be 100%, do you think the Kings can survive and continue to win games in this series if Kevin Herter and Harrison Barnes continue to shoot as badly as they have? Yes, I do. I do think that they can beat him without the effect of um, uh, De'Aaron Fox. Okay? This team is built to play without him as well as they are with him. Of course, like I said earlier, you know, he's instrumental in everything that they do. They, you know, they need his clutchness, if you want to call that a word or anything like that. But <laughs> things, these things are really, really important. So I do believe that Damian Mitchell will step up. I do believe that Malik Monk, you know, will up the level of his game. And I do believe Kevin Herter will come out of his funk, you know, as far as uh, shooting too. And understand, you know, Kevin is playing Clay Thompson. I mean, I don't think he played that many minutes uh, last game, but Kevin is playing Clay Thompson. That's a you, you have to pay a attention to detail playing against a player like that. And I think, you know, right one through one through three, the first three games, he was doing extremely well of defending uh, Clay Thompson. But yes, he has to get those shots off. Everybody has to step up. These are opp opportunities. This is what you get paid to do. Okay, and the fans. They're looking for to light that beam. So you're back at home. I think you could, it can all, you know, up the level in their play and, and pull this thing off. I, I, I'm i confident that they will. Antonio, thanks for the time. It's much appreciated. Let's do it again soon. Thank you. Yes, sir. Y'all too have a great evening. You too. You too. There goes uh, Antonio Ray Harvey from the AP. Of course, he was on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. I can't believe you got a good question on that. I can't believe you got a good question. I got a great question. No, you got a good and it question. It was well deserved. No, we can go back yeah, and document great. it. No, he, he said, said great. We can check good. the tape. We will check the tape. We will check the tape. He said good question to you and good Pretty question sure to me. He said great. 